Hey everybody, it's Ripley, back again. We're about to flip some stuff on its head, <clears throat> as you're about to see. Remember back when we tried to define the derivative and I and I drew the curve and we went on the little fishing expedition, right? We had, the, we had the A and then we threw out the fishing line and we drew a whole bunch. Well, we're gonna build the, the problem of area under a curve in much the same way. So what we're gonna do, let me erase this thing really quickly. What we're gonna do is, by the time everything is said and done in this chapter, we are going to figure out, we're going to be able to figure out the area under a curve from, say, A to B. Okay? So, I don't know, we'll just call this, we'll just call this area. Okay? We want to be able to do that. But before we do that, I want to make sure that we understand why that's important. Why is that useful? All right, let me change pens real quick. Well, it's, it's actually a very, it's, it's a super easy question to answer, all right, at least at the introductory level. Let's say that we have a, a, a vehicle that's moving at a constant velocity. So we'll say constant velocity of 60 miles an hour, all right, and it travels for, say, three hours. So this is going to be 60 miles per hour, and it's going to travel for three hours. Well, along here comes our curve, right? It's cruising along. Its velocity is constant. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be a constant velocity, but apparently I can't draw that using this tablet. Well, how do we, I mean, just intuitively speaking, what do we know in terms of the distance that it traveled? Well, that's easy. It's going to be 60 miles per hour times three hours using dimensional analysis, we know that the thing went 180 miles, right? Now, however, and there, this was something that early mathematicians started to notice and, and they started figuring out tools for this. Do you realize also that the area under the velocity curve, the area under velocity is equal to 60 times three, which is 180. So there's something to be said about the area. If I define something in terms, you know, in terms of a function, if I can find the area under that curve, or really under the curve is a misnomer. What I really mean is the area, I say area under the curve, right? That's an R, by the way, under the curve. But what I mean is between the curve, oops, the curve, and the x-axis, because under the curve it goes infinitely, right? And that would be true of all functions. So, okay, so mathematicians and physicists started looking at this and they're like, wait, there appears to be import to finding the area under curves. And what does that mean? So that's the journey that we're going to take. And we're going to start out just like we did before with, with derivatives. We're going to take a, re a very, very rudimentary approach here really quickly. So think about this from you're a mathematician who's decided that it's important to find the area under a curve. Okay? So let's take a function. And I'm going to try and figure out the area under this curve. We'll call this f of x. And I'm going to do this from, say, a to B. And you have no idea how to figure this out. All right? You know, maybe you looked at this kind of a problem and you're like, wait a sec, I remember from before that distance, well, really displacement, is the antiderivative of velocity, but I got a long way to go before I can do that. Now, what you want is you want a very simple way to be able to approximate the area, at least at first. Remember how we did it with derivatives? We just approximated until we had enough we, we, we approximated um, instantaneous rate of change or slope of tangent line until we had enough sort of mathematical wherewithal with the limit, with the advent of the limit, we were in business. <clears throat> Excuse me. So maybe from just a real overly simplistic way, you might say, okay, well, I'm going to build, how about I just build some rectangles? I'm going to build a rectangle here, and maybe I'll build a rectangle here. Because rectangles are easy, you can teach them to a, to a five-year-old, right, being able to find the area um, of, a, of a rectangle, right? Just take the base and times the height, and then that, right? Does that make sense? So, what what I would do if I wanted to figure out the area under the curve, I could find the area of this first little little chunk, and then the area of the second, and the area of the third, and the area of the fourth, and the area of the fifth. And I would just simply take. Now I'm going to throw a notation at you when I'm done. I could just go a one 
plus a2 plus a3 plus dot 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 plus a5. Or I could take the sum, you ready, a little pre-calculus notation, as i goes from 1 to 5 of a sub i. Right? They mean exactly the same thing. This is just a shorthand notation. Does that make sense? All right, but there's a problem here. You may select the width of these rectangles. By the way, these are called, these guys right here are called subintervals. All right, the true interval that we're looking for is from A to B. So a subinterval is going to be less than, than the interval from A to B. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you may select the width of these subintervals differently than I do. And therefore, we'd end up with different answers. And you know that, that mathematics really, mathematicians in particular, seek to have consistent, easy ways, parsimonious ways that we can do these kinds of problems. So what do we do? Well, how do I, the, the question is, is how do I make, how do I make, how do I ensure, really, make subintervals, intervals of equal size? All right? That's actually a very simple question to ask. Well, the, the answer is, I guess I should put a question mark there, shouldn't I? The answer is one. Figure out how many you want. How many intervals? How many intervals do you want to start off with? Intervals. That's the first question that you have to ask yourself. And then let's let that equal n. And then part two, think about it. How do you take a length? Let me change colors. So I've got a length of x that is a fixed length. Well, how long is that? Well, assuming that b is on the right, I, I suppose that I could say that that length is equal to the absolute value of a minus b. But since we assume that b is going to be on the right, can't we just call that length b minus a? Right? So that, if I want to split this thing up into subintervals of equal width, then I simply need to take b minus a and divide it by n. Now there's a name for this in mathematics. It's called delta x, which totally makes sense if you think about it, right? Delta x is the change in x right here. This would be the change in x sub 1. This would be delta x sub 2, or the change in x sub 2. This would be the change in x sub 3, et cetera, et cetera to make it uniform and say, all right, I want all of my delta x's to be the same width, then I'm going to just say it's got to be b minus a over n. So you figure out how many intervals you want, and then you take b minus a over n. Nothing to it. So let's actually play with this just a second. 